I'm here at the 2019 Taipei Bike Show to bring you the hottest new bike tech. This is Asia's largest bike trade industry show and it's got over 1,400 exhibitors. It's massive, but to truly appreciate just how big it is, I kind of really have to show you. So check this out, or should I say, tech this out. This Pinarello Dogma is fitted with a really cool piece of tech called the X Shifter by a company called Cyclovation. Now what this does is it turns any mechanical group set on any bike into an electronic wireless group set. How awesome is that? It does it by having these little shifter buttons that are on your handlebars and then these connect to actuators which you place near to your rear and front derailleurs and that grips the cable and that moves the cable for you to, to change the gear and it does it in a really neat, fast and precise way. It's impressive how well it works. The cool thing here is that it's a lot cheaper than the full price of a full electronic group set. It's a much cheaper upgrade. It costs 399 US dollars I'm told and the weight is just 120 grams. Here we have the system fitted to a SRAM Red mechanical group set and I'm genuinely impressed with how well it shifts. There's also an app which allows you to adjust the timing of the shifts and also the shift intervals as well. Nice. I've just spotted a very special bike. This is the Team CCC bike of Greg Van Avermaer in its resplendent gold paint job, which signifies the fact that he is the current reigning Olympic champion. It's a stunner, isn't it? But what's really cool for me is the fact it's got these overachieved wheels on, which John craftily spotted uh, in the Middle East earlier in the year. But this is the first time I've seen them in the flesh, or well, carbon, and uh, they look really cool indeed. These are actually a tubular version, now that I can get my hands on them and see them. And also, something that I've never seen before is this overachieved branded saddle, which has sort of craftily been put on here. It looks incredible. It's quite a short-nosed uh, saddle, and it's got this really cool carbon rail underneath. So I'd guess it's very light, but I can't take it off and weigh it. And also around here, we've got the time trial wheels, which we've also seen the CCC team using. So you've got the disc wheel at the back with the big Overachieve logo on, and this kind of really nice looking Techstream carbon, and then the four spoke front wheel as well, which looks very fast indeed. Now I've been trying to find out a bit more information about the Overachieve wheels and saddles and stuff, and everyone's been a bit tight lipped. No one's really saying much about it. I searched online and found that there is an overachieve.cc website which is mysteriously popped up but again there's not much information on there yet so I guess we'll just have to stay tuned. I'm really excited about this piece of tech because I think it's a world first. It's an anti-lock braking system for a caliper rim brake and it can be fitted to well any caliper rim brake or v-brake front and rear. Here we've got it fitted to the front. It's from a company called Sabs from Taiwan. The system comes on automatically when you brake really hard and is able to pump the brake at a rate of 11 oscillations in three seconds. So pretty cool. And we can see it actually in operation on this jig with this spinning wheel next to the bike. Now in terms of how it works, I don't know. I've asked them and they're being a bit tight-lipped on it because they're a bit worried about people stealing the idea and intellectual property. But they have said that it doesn't contain pneumatics or electronics. It's a purely mechanical system and it works over and over again. So pretty cool. If you have any ideas how it works, let us know in the comments. I've just come over to the FSA Envision stand and there is loads of new tech here, starting with this. So here we have the K-Force Wii group set. We've seen it before, but I've not seen it before with hydraulic disc brakes. That's new for me. And the most exciting thing here is the levers because they're much more sort of ergonomic shape than other hydro levers we've seen out there. That is a really low profile. And the way FSA has done this is by instead of putting the master cylinder sort of here, it's put it here. So it kind of makes them a little bit longer, but nice and ergonomic and low on the tops there, which is, I like that. The guys at FSA tell me that the availability of the Wii Hydro Disc Group set is gonna be around May, June of this year. So stay tuned for that. 
I've also spotted these rather cool looking power meters and chain rings. So this is FSA's power box power meter, but it now comes with a subcompact uh, chain set and also this rather substantial and aero looking TT version. That's a 55 tooth chain ring and filled in to be more aero, but I like the look of that. There's also some aftermarket chain sets that are specifically for the e-bike market, which is pretty interesting because FSA believes that as the e-bike market develops, customers are going to start to be a bit more discerning about modifying their bikes and fitting chain rings that are better suited to the riding that they're doing. So I've not seen any other brands really focusing on this yet, so that's quite an interesting move. And then they also have this integrated stem, which I'm particularly pleased to see because if you have a modern bike with lots of integration on it, as we're increasingly seeing, then your stem and bar options can be quite limited. Say, for example, with my Trek Madon, it's hard for me to use anything but Trek's proprietary bar and stem. But with this one, you could actually fit your cables in through the stem and route them down into the, uh, the head tube there. It's nice and neat. I like it. I'm a massive TT nerd, as many of you know. Couldn't help but notice this rather spectacular disc wheel uh, from Vision. It's a Metron tubular, but I believe there's a clincher version as well. And then I spotted there's some new FSA Wii group set, well, TT specific bits as well. So look at these bar end shifters. How cool are they? They're really neat. And then on the levers as well, there's buttons. Not seen these before. Nice. Just spotted some new wheels from a brand called CEC, which I've not heard of before, but they've really caught my uh, attention because they appear to have fabric spokes. And these are actually made from a material called Dyneema, according to the brand. And this is a gravel endurance wheel set. And the intention is that by having these Dyneema fabric spokes, the wheel can compress more and absorb shocks better than a wheel with traditional spokes. It's a really intriguing concept and I'd be keen to see how it works and how it actually feels out on the road. But also by having these spokes, they're able to make the wheel a bit lighter as well. So this is a 38 millimeter deep carbon clincher rim disc brake specific wheel. It's 22 millimeters wide and it's tubeless compatible. And it weighs just 1,250 grams a pair, which is very competitive. You can always rely on Topeak for some exciting new gadgets and they don't disappoint me this year either. So the Tubi Booster, we've seen this before. It's a big canister that you can pre-charge with 160 PSI to help quickly inflate a tubeless tyre onto a rim because sometimes it can be quite difficult to seat a tubeless tyre into the bead and so this just releases a load of air really quickly. They've actually modified it now and called it the Tubi Booster X. And with this, you can now attach a track pump into the top of it, and it has a hose as well. And this means you can make use of the gauge on the track pump to be more accurate in how much air you put in. Nice little modification. But the thing that's really caught my eye is this. This is the Air Booster G2, and it's a CO2 inflator with a gauge built into it. Really cool. I mean, I've used a lot of CO2 inflators, but I've never seen one with a gauge in. They're really useful gadgets, but the problem is that you don't know how much air's gone in. There's always a bit of guesswork involved and this takes the guesswork out of it. So I'm going to try it and see how I get on. So you can't see on the gauge now because it's gone back to zero because it's not connected, but I didn't use the whole canister. And I mean, this went to about 110 PSI. <laughs> so it's certainly, well, it's really hard. It's, a tw th it's only a 23 millimeter tire, but that's cool, but I, I love the idea that you now know exactly how much air is in there and, uh, well, you can use the gauge to let a bit out and you'd know exactly how much is in there as well, so no, that's, I really like that. I've come onto the KS stand, KS being a company that manufactures dropper posts amongst other things. You may have seen their dropper posts on the Mavic neutral service bikes at the Tour de France, but they have some new specific ones for road and gravel, which are particularly exciting. So this is one fitted to a gravel bike. It's the LEV CI. It's very, very light. It's made from carbon fiber on the tube there as well. If I press the button on the bar, you'll see it pop up. Nice, about 160 millimeters of travel on this one. Why is this useful? Well, for gravel bikes, it's particularly useful because when you go down a really little steep descent on, on some gravel, it can be quite disconcerting when you've got the saddle to bar drop 
of a road bike, you feel like you're sort of going over the handlebars. So being able to alter your position and get lower with your center of gravity, thanks to being able to lower your saddle, makes technical descents much better. There's also an advantage on the road as well by being able to adopt a more aerodynamic lower position when descending. This is something that Ivan Basso, or even Basso, uh, used in the Giro d'Italia years ago, but it never kind of really caught on. However, now bikes have got lighter, so you know, you see mechanics adding weight to bikes to, to get them to the UCI limit. Why not add some functional weight and get more aero and not have to adopt a kind of dangerous position on the top tube? I think it's, yeah. Could we see more dropper posts on road bikes? Who knows? Let us know in the comments. That's it for day one at the Taipei Bike Show. I hope you've enjoyed our look at the hot new tech. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to GCN. You know the deal. And I mean, we've barely scratched the surface of what's here. It's incredible how big this place is. So stay tuned for more tech coming out very soon on the channel from the show. And in the meantime, if you'd like to watch more Taipei Bike Tech, you can click down here for some stuff from last year. It's cool if you've not seen it already. Watch it again if you have.